Oh, it can't hear me. I don't know why I'm whispering. I just whispering seems stupid. Do one more time. Whispering seems stupid too. Join me, Mike Clarkson, on the first ever Herp Care Adventure Series as we study the wild relatives of our captive bred pets in order to better understand how to care for them. Let's go beyond the glass. We're here in the rainforest of Borneo, looking for one cool snake, the Borneo short-tailed python. I'm not gonna give this one a long introduction because I'm sure you're just as eager as I am to go find this snake. We contacted several local herpers for this shoot and ticked their brain as far as the best spot to find pythons, and this is exactly where they put us. What's interesting about this habitat is every tree has plants growing on top of plants. It's genuine rainforest, but it's also almost like a peat bog. The water level's really high, so the pythons take advantage of these dry areas. That's where you're gonna see them, is hiding in this leaf litter. Oh! Cool, check this out. It's not our target, obviously, being on a tree, but it's a really important part of this ecosystem. This is the Bornean giant millipede. This guy plays a hugely important role in this rainforest. If it weren't for him, there wouldn't be snakes like blood pythons on the floor. Instead, all this dead decomposing matter would become sewage. But thanks to bugs like him and isopods and springtails, they're the cleaning crew. Every little organism has a really big and important role, and this is one of them. So get back to work, buddy. Break time's over. All right, carry on. So this vine growing on this plant here, it's a pitcher plant. They're a carnivorous plant, kind of like the Venus flytrap. These modified leaves are basically their mouths. Bugs crawl in, they fall in, and the water inside drowns them. It's an ingenious way for a plant to get the nutrients it needs without a great connection to the soil. Oh, check it out, check it out. And this is how it works, look at that ant. So if he makes one wrong step, He's pitcher plant food. Not for the ant's sake, but I really hope he falls in. That'd be cool to see. Looks like the ant wins this round. Happy hunting, plant. We just came up on our first blood python. It's like right at the base of this tree. It's right there. Can you tell which way it's facing? No. Shoot. Oh, well, guess there's only one way to find out. Let's go. No, it's okay, buddy. It's okay. Nope. So, when people say the wild cots can be nippier than the captive breads, they're not kidding. Come on, dude. Gotta get your close-up, gotta get you ready for it. This is the Borneo short-tailed or Borneo blood python. This is a perfect specimen. I wanna make a couple quick observations that we can relate back to home. The water here, it's red. The water's red because it's got lots of tannins in it. So if I was trying to build a paludarium for a blood python where he had an aquatic and a land area, i definitely go with tons of freaking leaves. It's really bioactive here. Stuff breaks down quickly. So I would imagine a bioactive short-tailed python tank would be a really cool thing to do. A lot of people don't appreciate the importance of these leaves. This is the snake shelter. Obviously a good hide, a good hollow is fantastic as well, but they love these leaves. They camouflage right into it. Another thing, once I move these leaves out of the way, and get some of the actual substrate here, so to speak. You can see that it's, it's retaining moisture, but if I put it against a piece of fabric, 
and damp it. It's not actually that wet. So I think cypress mulch with leaf or coconut could be really good choices, a, kind of a, a jungly substrate. We've disturbed his day enough and he's absolutely made mine. So I'm gonna let him be and take some measurements and trip well done. Not a whole lot of UV reading here. And, and honestly, these guys are more night active. They'll, they'll hang out in these shaded areas. So what's gonna be most important on this guy is gonna be our temperature and our humidity. So I'm gonna put all this other expensive testing gear away, considering I'm completely saturated. There are so many crazy animals and plants I've never even seen here. It's awesome. Rainforest diversity at its best. And hiking at its worst. Yep, oh, water in the boot, water in the boot. <laughs> 